Good morning YouTube. What exactly is this Internet of Things? That would take more than a short video to explain. I see it as simply connecting things together in some manner, doing so easily and inexpensively. Easy and inexpensive are the key points. If it's hard or expensive, it's not going to happen. Why? Because you really won't know what you can do with it until it's up and connected. So how about a simple project to build a custom IoT device for home automation system? What if that device costs less than $10 and you can make it in a few minutes? Enough of the intro. Let's do this. I have a Vera Lite home automation controller that uses Z-Wave networking to communicate to various modules. I've done a few earlier videos on this system and some of my devices. I'll put a link in the upper right corner up here. And if you need a remote controlled light dimmer or motion sensor or other common function, you can purchase devices to do those jobs. But be prepared to shell out around $50 per device if you want to go this route. Putting a full-blown Z-Wave device into every outlet and appliance in your house would be expensive. What if you have a specific task you want to do and need a custom device for that job? Let me show you one interesting option. I found MySensors.org through some awesome videos from Pete B. I'll add a link to his video channel in the upper right corner. My sensors leverage low-cost microcontrollers and radio transceivers to make inexpensive, flexible add-ons to the Z-Wave network. It's based on open source hardware and software. As they put it, it's the internet of your things. The biggest issue you'll run into is there's no single how-to page. There are many pages, but none of them are complete. The key to their system is what's known as a gateway. The idea is the gateway talks to the Vera controller via a port and talks to the My Sensors devices via the radio transceiver. There are several versions. One is serial USB, others are Ethernet based. Okay, this is where the sticker shock might get you. You'll need to use an Arduino Nano and make sure it's got the real FTDI USB to serial chip. That is a must. Then you'll need an NRF24L01 radio transceiver, some wire, and a small capacitor for the power supply on the radio. If you've spent more than five dollars up to this point, you've done something wrong. So you'll want to wire this up per the instructions on the MySensor site. And I'll put a link in the video description. And note that they are showing the Pro Mini pinout here. So be sure to have a Nano pinout for reference or use the Pro Mini along with something like an FTDI USB to serial adapter. And if you're using the Arduino Nano like I did, you want to be sure and use this 3V3, which is the 3.3 volt output for the radio power, since the Nano VCC pin is at 5 volts up here. And here's what the serial gateway should look like. You can ignore these three wires up here. I'll cover that in the next video. So that's it for the hardware side. You have your radio, you have your Nano, the capacitor is soldered on to the radio, and that's the serial gateway. So that's it for the hardware side, unless you want to add a case. Okay, there's the slight matter of the serial gateway code in the My Sensors libraries. So you'll want to download the Arduino Master from the My Sensors library site. I use this version 1.5, so extract that and copy the contents of the libraries folder to your Arduino IDE libraries folder, then add those to the IDE. So then you'll want to copy the serial gateway sketch into your work folder and fire up the Arduino IDE. So most important thing is you want to check this myconfig.h file and make sure this pound define debug statement is commented out. If it's enabled, the debug messages go out over the USB port on your Arduino Nano and that may confuse the Vera controller, so make sure debug is off in the final compile. So you want to compile the code and then send it to the device and make sure you have your board set appropriately and then make sure your serial port is correct. And if you want to check that the program's running, 
fire up the serial monitor from the IDE and make sure to set the baud rate to 115,200 baud. If everything's working, you're going to see something like this on the startup message. Now, unplug the Nano from your PC and plug it into the Vera. It'll get power from the USB port. Note that the Vera Lite only has one USB port. Initially, I used a two-port passive USB hub in my Vera, one for my USB memory stick, the second one for the serial gateway. Unfortunately, one of the gotchas not covered in the how-to guides is that you'll likely need to add a powered hub to run the serial gateway. My gateway would stop updating after a few minutes, and this powered hub solved that issue. Okay, now we have to set up the Vera. The main issue is that the My Sensors app or plugin is not on the Vera App Store, so you need to download the files from My Sensors and manually install them. So you'll download the My Sensors app from their website. There's a Vera UI 7 folder that gets created when you extract the files, and there's these 10. Arduino files here and what you want to do is go to develop apps and then you want to click on loop files L-U-U-P files and then you want to drag and drop these 10 files over here and you can see I've got them already loaded so that's how you basically install the app this darduino1.xml is the name of the device. So you'll want to go here, create device, and the UPnP device file name is that. Enter the file name, you click create device, and then what you need to do is reload the loop engine on the Vera. One way to do that is you can come over here to settings, Z-Wave settings, advanced, and then reload engine and you click go so then you're almost there you have to come back here to apps develop apps and then you need to configure the serial port again this is if you're doing the serial gateway note that it shows up here as FTDI underscore SIO and that's the reason you need to use a real FTDI version of the Nano if you're doing a serial gateway because the Vera only has a driver for the FTDI internal. So you're going to uh, pick the device that was created from the Create Device button, which is the My Sensors plugin, and then you're going to set the baud rate, parity, data bits, and stop bits according to the My Sensor site. And that's it. You now have a serial gateway up and running. So what does it do? Well, not much, as you only have the Internet of Thing at this point. But this My Sensors plugin is what lets you wirelessly connect all manner of other My Sensors devices to your home automation controller. These devices are made exactly the same way as the serial gateway. You have your Arduino, the radio, and some sort of input or output hardware. So you could plug in a temperature, light, humidity, motion sensor, and you have one of those to add to your network. Pete B. has some great videos on making an irrigation controller, a freezer temperature alarm, and many more. My plans are to use these to talk to various devices I have that have some sort of serial I.O. and integrate those into my home automation system. For example, my trimetric battery monitor has a serial port, my solar charge controllers have serial ports, I have some power meters and airflow meters with serial ports. Wouldn't it be slick to plug an inexpensive gadget into that serial port and suddenly have that data piped into my home automation system? So, stay tuned to the next video where I'll make a simple My Sensors device to add to my system to test it out. Feel free to post up any questions in the comment section below or on Google+. If you found this video interesting, give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. If you haven't already, subscribe to my channel for updates. And as always, thanks for watching.